Hello everyone, my name is Dan the Tutor. This is a clip from one of my weekly group tutoring sessions at the University of Delaware for Physics 201. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you and enjoy. Yeah, so this is the last question of the night. Newton's second law of rotation. So first let's talk about Newton's second law. Newton's second law said this, F equals MA, right? Well, we're gonna have a torque equivalent of this equation. The equivalent for force is torque. The equivalent for mass is actually I, moment of inertia. And the equivalent for acceleration is alpha. Okay, so we have this new equation right here. Torque equals I times alpha. This is gonna be very important. And it's exactly the same thing as when we had F equals MA. And another thing to note, this is not just F in the same way this is not just torque. This is the net torque. Why is that important? Well, we're going to be combining two things now. Remember earlier when I said net torque is equal to all the torques going counterclockwise minus the torques going clockwise? Yeah, now we're going to set that equal to I times alpha. But the good news is, you know how in the last problem it took a while to find I, like we had to plug in this complicated thing? Well, normally they tell you I or they tell you what the shape is, and then you can use that chart that, I mean, you can really Google a chart, moment of inertia chart or table, and you'll see for yourself what those coefficients are. But normally they tell you what the object is, and it's actually not that bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at an example with this stuff, because it's not exactly easy. What is the magnitude of the acceleration? I should have actually said angular acceleration for this one. I apologize. Angular acceleration. Okay. So again, the equation is going to be torque equals I times alpha, or I really should say net torque. Let's find the net torque first. And again, net torque has to do with things rotating. In this case, obviously, it's my wheel that's going to be rotating here. If I think about the forces acting on my wheel, on the left side, I have the force of gravity from a 12 kilogram object pulling it down. On the right side, I have another mg, force of gravity, pulling it down, but that one's only a mass of six. If you can imagine this, the thing is, this wheel's definitely gonna be spinning counterclockwise. It, it just has to be, the 12 kilogram mass is bigger, it makes sense logically. And now we're gonna prove it with physics. So the net torque is equal to, it's gonna be a force times a distance, and remember, it's the perpendicular component, which I didn't give you angles for this one either, so don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about force perpendicular in most problems. The only time you have to worry about it for the most part is when they give you an angle, obviously. So let's do this. The 12 kilogram mass, that has a force mg. So force is mass, 12, g is 9.81, right? And now that distance, think of it like this. Even though the mass is way down here, it's essentially coming into contact with the wheel at that point right there there's where our force mg really is acting on the wheel and that distance from the center is 1.5 meters so times 1.5 i need more room i'll write it down here 12 times 9.81 times 1.5 that's all the torque from just the left side and again i'm going to say it's positive because that direction that i just drew right here is counterclockwise which is good and then minus the clockwise force or torque, that's gonna be from the six kilogram mass. That torque is a mass of six times acceleration of gravity, 9.81 times, well, there's no sine theta, so we don't need to worry about it, but we do need to worry about the distance and that distance in the same way that it was 1.5 on the other side, it's gonna be 1.5 right here. So times 1.5. Now I can just plug this in a calculator and we'll, we'll find our net torque. It's not the final answer quite just yet, but we're almost there. 12 times 9.81 times 1.5 minus 6 times 9.81 times 1.5. We're going to get 88.29, and that's our net torque. And again, we're going to set this equal to I times alpha, and we're solving for alpha. So if I can find I, the moment of inertia, we're done, and we can go home. And actually, we're probably going to get done 15 minutes early today, which is great. So I, the moment of inertia, how do I find that? Well, in this case, I don't think I told you. I should have told you. That was my bad. I have it here in my notes. But it's a solid disk with mass 20 kilograms. The wheel 
is a mass, is a solid disc with a mass of 20 kilograms. Why is that important? Well, for a solid disc, for a solid disc, a solid disc, I is going to be one half m r squared. Again, that would be found in a table. The coefficient is one half for a solid disc. We know the mass is 20, so one half times 20. And then we know r is 1.5, the radius, and we're gonna square that. So we're gonna get i equals one half times 20 times 1.5 squared. We're gonna get 22.5. I don't even care about the units for i because I know the final answer is gonna be in radians per second squared, right? Because that's what angular acceleration is. Yeah, these units are terrible, so I wouldn't worry too much about them in the, in the middle steps, that is. So it's gonna be 88.29 for torque. For i times alpha, it's 22.5 times alpha. We just need to divide both sides by 22.5. 88.29 divided by 22.5. We'll get a final answer for alpha of 3.92. And again, the units are radians per second squared. And also, since I was asking for magnitude of the acceleration, magnitude means even if I did get a negative answer here, I want to make it positive anyway. And again, that's because, look at the question, I said was the magnitude of the acceleration, of the angular acceleration, which means I don't care about the plus or minus. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want me to start doing free weekly group sessions at your university, please post in the comments below or email me at dan at danthetutor.com. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.